You know, obviously uh, came off there the long uh, road trip. We looked at the film today. We took yesterday to get mentally and physically refreshed and ready. We were we traveled together and all of us were together there for five days. So I thought as important as anything was to try to give them a chance to take a deep breath, get their minds and bodies uh, right uh, heading into today. So we practiced today. We were, we were really good today. Uh, guys looked uh, rejuvenated with season three, obviously on the brink tomorrow. Uh, fresh start. And, um, you know, we talked a lot today about, you know, what we learned, certainly from last week. You know, unfortunately for us, we didn't come out on top on Sunday, but we did a lot of really good things. I showed them those things. I showed them some things we needed to clean up. Um, you know, the resiliency that we had when we got down 53-43, we need to have that all the time. But I thought we really did some good things. So some guys really competed, and that was great to see. So we got to build on that, um, and obviously, you know, for us right now, as you head into tournament, one of the things we always talk about with our guys is doing everything in our power to try to be better than that team on that given day. And, um, you know, we put obviously our game plan in uh, today. It is the third time that we've played uh, Minnesota, so there's quite a bit of familiarity there, especially since we played them quite recently. Um, so that part, uh, from a preparation standpoint, I always say that teams will wrinkle a thing or two. We certainly will, or adjustment here or there. But by the time you get to the end of this, you kind of are who you are, and uh, you've got to do what you do well and try to play to your strengths. So talked a lot about that, had a good workout today. Uh, guys seemed to be very spirited, had a great deal of energy, and uh, very talkative today, which was good. Communicated well and seemed to be excited uh, to head to Indianapolis here when we get finished uh, with the presser. We'll head to, you know, head to Indy and, and uh, get ready to tackle Minnesota tomorrow. Questions? Obviously, down season for the team, but Malcolm Hill getting second team All Big Ten. What, what do you think of that honor for him, given what? He's yeah, I think Jeremy. It's well deserved. I mean, obviously, he's uh, you know it's been well documented all that he's done. The thing I've, I've most proud of him the other day uh, was how hard he played. Now, obviously, everyone's going to look at his points and rebounds. I think a lot of that was a byproduct of his effort. That's as hard as he's played defensively for that long uh, in a game all season. And it's interesting when you have the right frame of mind and you play that way defensively, then it's amazing how oftentimes your offense will flow from there. And I really thought that's what helped happen to him uh, on Sunday. And we had some other guys that made some big-time physical, energetic plays. We just need to do that more consistently. And uh, I showed him the contrast of clips today where we gave ridiculous effort. You know, we call them Mattos uh, in honor of Matt Heldman. And we had more in the game on Sunday than we've had in the game all year. So we competed and showed some resiliency and uh, just needed to make a play or two more, and hopefully we can do that in Indy. Hey, well, Malcolm, I mean, you've asked him to do a lot, and you've talked a lot about his versatility and ability to play one through four and maybe sometimes five. Just what does it mean to say that you know, he's can adjust his game accordingly when he goes from around the point maybe for a few possessions and then he's back at the four? Yeah, it's, it's really it's, it's indicative or speaks of his versatility, Scott. He's just really versatile. Part of that is skill set. Part of that is mentality. Uh, part of that is size. You know, if he was six foot one, probably wouldn't be able to play, you know, as many positions. So one of the things uh, with the size at six six and two twenty five, two thirty, and he's pretty physically strong. Uh, you know, he's able to do that. So I, I think it really just speaks. You know, the one word I would say that would probably summarize it or, you know, would, would be just versatility. Kendrick's obviously had, had some struggles here. Um, just from the field, I've asked you this before with Fink. Is it injuries? Is it Big Ten scouting? What do, what do you think it is? Right? Yeah, I think obviously teams are gearing towards him um, more. Uh, but part of it is, uh, you know, making some of the good ones he's getting, Jeremy. And part of it's taking some better ones and being patient. And sometimes that's hard to do when you're a scorer, you know. But we've, uh, you know, worked with him here the last couple of days to kind of show him, you know, what that looks like. And, you know, I think he has a pretty good picture of that heading into Indianapolis. But, you know, we're going to need him to, to make a couple more. Coach, I don't know how much of a big picture your look you're taking at this week. I know you take a heck of a run to get a postseason opportunity. Do you, do you talk about that at all with the players or, or what the goals are for the week? No, for us, we've just talked about trying to get our name to the next line on the bracket. That's really all we've talked about. And then we'll come up for air. That's what everybody's trying to do. But I think as soon as you start to, you know, think about, you know, I've talked to them a lot about being zero and zero, Matt. 
you know, as soon as you start thinking about like Sunday's game or two weeks ago's game or what it's going to look like on Friday or Saturday, or then I, I, I just think that's a recipe for disaster. You know, we've got to focus in on uh, Minnesota. Uh, we had a good practice today. And, um, you know, our, our objective and our goal is to get our name to the next line on that bracket. Lauren? If you had a 16-team league, you don't take four games to get the championship. we got a 14-team league, yeah. and it takes five. Yeah. Has it occurred to you that we're maybe not doing this right in terms of the way this is set up, or maybe they are doing it right? Yeah, it's an interesting thought. I really haven't thought about it just because – you know, I say this all the time, but I, there's certain things I can control and I can't control. Um, but I'll give you this. It's an interesting thought. I have not thought about it, Lauren, to be truthful in terms of how the bracket's constructed or the decision uh, that was made to put it together that way. So I don't know really if I have an opinion one way or, or the other. I'll, I'll get back to you on that when I get some time to think about it. But, but um, you know, it kind of just is what it is, and the bracket's out, and we've got to try to tackle it. I think UConn may have with Kemba. Yeah, did they? Yeah. 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 Um, th yeah. Was that when they had the facility issue with raining or something, maybe? George, yeah. Dennis Felton. Yeah. Yeah. That ironclad memory of yours is kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about, you know, preparing for teams, you know, third time you played Minnesota now and teams are what they are with all that Minnesota has gone through is it any more difficult to prepare for them that's a great question it is unique you know because they've played a certain way now for three games including our last game against them um, and and really another way for one game because King's been out you know King played in two of the last three and was deemed out uh, after the Wisconsin home game so it, that is unique. I'll give you that. It's a little bit unique uh, in terms of you know defenses they're playing at least up to this point and things they're running and all. Some of those things are similar, but that part is a little bit unique. Uh, yeah, there's no question about that. I would imagine a lot of 12 seeds are kind of looking forward to the end of the season, but from your standpoint today, practice. Your no. Yeah, we just don't. They follow. You know, uh, they fo hopefully follow our, our, our leadership. And I'm not just meaning our coaches, but our players too. I mean, you know, Tracy does a good job. Obviously, it's a little harder when you're on the sitting um, and not out there playing during the course of the game to lead. But uh, he's a prime example. Like he would, you know, he, he might give, um, you'd have to ask him, but he, he might be interested in giving a body part to play in this game tomorrow, you know? Um, it, it, you know, when you go through that, like he has, like I think he will tell you, don't take anything for granted. Great opportunity. Um, everybody's sitting at zero and zero. And, you know, we can't control what's happened in the past, but we can control our attitude, effort, our execution, our resiliency tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern time. You know, and so that, that's, that's what we're focused in on. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited uh, to, to compete uh, tomorrow and, and, and get a fresh start here. Off topic, but have you got the chance to talk to Lovey Smith and kind of just was the atmosphere been like around campus? Yeah, just a little bit. Obviously, we've been busy in prep and and um, was at the press conference yesterday. Had a chance to meet him there and then uh, saw him again last night at our radio show. So it was great uh, meeting him. Um, if my reaction, because uh, my wife asked me, is it kind of what I thought it would be. You know, in terms of uh, you know very poised and and uh, has has very di dignified. Um, you know, obviously I read, and I said this yesterday, a lot of Tony Dungy's stuff. I have a great deal of respect for him. And, um, you know, I, I know uh, Lovey has a connection with him, and I've always kind of viewed him that way as a guy who mentors players and, and uh, his integrity. And, and um, you know, certainly at first glance, I think that's what you absorb, uh, you know, when you're around him. But I'm looking forward to getting to know him better. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's great. Obviously, I mean, it's no secret. I mean, I, you know, I've been at places where you got, got uh, you know, multiple sports all rolling at the same time. It's fun. It's great for everybody. I said yesterday, you know, the more successful all of us are, the more it helps the community, the more it helps the university, you know, the more it helps the athletic department. You know, we're all in this together, exactly like he said yesterday, and uh, you know, I think it's great. You know, I think it's terrific. I think it does. Um, help the Illinois brand. I think it helps 
a lot of different things. You know, we're just excited that he's here now and he's on campus and, you know, we're glad that he's a part of our, our department. Kind of back to Malcolm, was he a guy that you could ask to play four positions and lead and you know, score, rebound, and distribute like he has? I mean, did, was he a guy that you could approach like that? He kind of got forced to, Scott. He had to, you know. And um, a lot of those things he was ready for through his experience, his hard work. And he's really a great kid over the course of the last two years. Some of the things were new for him that we asked. Some of the things are, you know, you have, you have to fight uh, to get better at certain things or, you know, do things that maybe you haven't done before or, you know, uh, and not even so much that, but maybe instead of having, you know, two or three things on your plate, maybe all of a sudden now it's four or five, you know. So I think all of that has been a great learning experience for him and is going to make him a better player, a better person, um, more appreciative. You know, he's, um, you know, I, I think some of those things are just kind of like in the situation that we were in, he was almost, you know, he had to step up in a lot of those areas. And, uh, and not to say that he was fighting us on any of those areas. He's a great kid. But, um, you know, it, some of those things you have to work. Some things in life you're a little bit more inclined or naturally gifted at, and other things you have to work uh, to develop a skill set and certain things. And he's been open-minded and really worked. And, but I think at the end of the day, it's going to make him better. It's going to make our program better. And uh, it's really a win all the way around. It's happened this year. Has your, both on the court and off, has your cell changed to recruits or are you on the same path as you, you've always been? No, I don't think it's changed a whole lot because I believe in where we're going. You know, I, I think, you know, I believe in this place, first of all. I believe in this university. You know, I believe in uh, our program. I believe in our staff. I believe in our players. Um, I believe in the way in which we do things. I, I believe in our culture. That doesn't mean that we can't get, we're always looking for ways to get better and seeking excellence in every single thing that we do. You know, I've got a staff that's about our guys first and foremost and helping them grow. And so none of that's really changed. You know, obviously we've been through some, you know, the last couple of years we've been through some kind of unforeseen, you know, circumstances and you've got to, you know, use those. Uh, you can view those hurdles as obstacles or opportunities. We view them as opportunities. You know, I think that, and, and we haven't, nothing's changed on our end in terms of the great university this is, our tradition, where we're going, how we're going to do it. Obviously, the new arena, that's a big difference from our first year. That's great. You know, I, I, I just think for us the most important thing is to stay the course, you know, and uh, be aggressive still. You know, we like to be aggressive in everything that we're doing, whether it's recruiting or whatever. But sometimes you have to be willing to have uh, some patience and perspective. And, um, you know, we've certainly tried to do that as well, while at the same time pushing forward and controlling what we can control. But, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to, you know, see what here's, is here in front of us for season three. You know, I'm excited to continue uh, recruiting. I'm excited for the building to continue to be renovated. You know, I'm excited about, as Jeremy said, Coach Smith joining uh, the athletic department. You know, I, I, there, there's a lot of great things, you know, and we're going to continue to piggyback those things and keep pushing and, and uh, eventually get here to where we all want to go. Um, that belief hasn't changed, and that cell really hasn't changed, to be honest. Yeah, when you're recruiting, how big of a factor is recruits playing together, like in the same class? Like, how, how big I think it depends on the kid, Jeremy. In my experience over the 20-some years or whatever, doing it, you know, as an assistant head coach, depends on the kid. You know, some kids that's really important. Some kids it's not as important. Uh, some group of guys it's maybe kind of important or not as. Some group of guys it's really important. So I, I just think it depends on, you know, every situation is so different and fluid. Um, so I, I just think that's really particular to each individual situation. Has the recruiting approach changed over the years? I know that venues and everything else make a difference, and the coaches obviously with Coach Smith. But have you evolved into a, a different approach with kids now, or are you the same as you? Well, were obviously before? we know more about Illinois now than we did when I first got here. You know, you try to educate it yourself as quickly as you can, and I had a great feel for the place before, but now you know even more, and uh, which is good. Um, I think, um, you know, we've had and understand, um, you know, what our blueprint's going to be. You wrinkle that and adjust that a little bit, Brett, but honestly, at our core, we haven't, we're not changing our core. 
We're not changing our core values. We're not going to change our culture. We're not going to change our approach to academics, you know, in terms of its importance, you know, our, our player development, you know, all those things that we put and take a lot of pride in and put a lot of time into, those things are going to stay the same. We know that they work. We've just got to, we got to stay the course. Oh,